gonna stick this in here. This is the 4.8 liter VTEC. <laughs> this is the 4.8 liter Vortec. Air intake's here. You can kind of see the filter. This is all let go. There we go. Oh yeah. Eh. Honestly, it could be worse. It doesn't even touch the dipstick. Okay, so I went to AutoZone. I picked up some fluids, a new air filter, because I'm going to give this van a lot of TLC, and at the end of it, she's gonna be running good, ain't she? Easy peasy, guys. Pull one out. Do the comparison. The difference in color shows how much dust is in the old one. Ooh, especially now that I dropped it. Make sure it's secure to where it holds itself without leaning against the edge of the air box. Line the arrows up. It's always that one. Then this one goes easy. All right, so next is going to be the wiper fluid. <clears throat> Dig your finger through there. Open her up and pour it in like it's a cup of water. Who cares if you spill? This is not oil. Alright, we still got a splash left for later. That's nice. I'm already 95% sure how to do it because I had a 4.3 liter V6 Vortec a few years ago on the Chevy uh, Blazer. Alright, let's get going with this oil change. Disclaimer, I am using jack stands. If you're gonna be working on a vehicle this large, make sure you have the properly rated jack stands for the weight and always take proper precaution getting the vehicle on and off jack stands. Never ever rely on one of these to hold the vehicle, especially while you're under it. All right, so we've got the filter, we've got the oil, we've got the oil pan. I have an oil wrench over there somewhere and we're gonna start this. There's probably less than four uh, quarts of oil in here from what the dipstick told me. We need a 15, it looks like. Hey, 15. Try a breaker bar. Let's do that uh, instead of forcing it. Uh, look at that. All right, let's try not to make a mess. You can kind of feel where this, the threads end. See how it's dripping? Cool. Look at that. So we're gonna let that drain out all the way. And once that's done, we're gonna crack the uh, oil filter. Oh, you c Always watch for that. It's okay if you spill a little bit, just make sure it doesn't turn into a huge mess. Now that the oil is mostly drained out, go ahead and put that back in. When you finish an oil change, you always make sure that this is as tight as you want it. If this loosens up via vibration and it leaks, even drip leaks like this and you don't notice it, you could end up with a blown motor in a short amount of time. All right, so next, we have to take off this oil filter. I'm using this type of grip. There's different kinds, but for me, this one has always worked the best. Feels like it wants to move. It's starting to go, cool. There we go. Whew. It's still going. It's a little slippery now, because I deformed it, but yeah, there we go, okay. It's pretty damn warm. You can feel through the metal. It's pretty full, so you gotta watch your face, your hands. 
when it goes to come out. So it's already leaking a little oil. So it's gonna start running down my arm. I'm gonna roll this back a bit, just in case. Okay, here we go. Roll, 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 roll. Ooh, that's messy. And it will, it should come off in a sec. Hold on, guys. Oh, there we go. And it's out. This is, oh my gosh. This especially with this kind of filter where it's pretty much at the lowest part of the motor, you're gonna have, uh, don't be afraid, just be ready to clean. Now that the oil is completely drained from both points, we can go ahead and pull out the new filter, but before we put the new filter on, you have got to make sure that this metal ring right here that the oil filter sits on doesn't have the old O-ring from the old filter. Because if you double up the O-rings, you can have a leak. It most likely will leak. And that could lead to the engine running low or out of oil or almost out of oil, and you could have engine problems. So, always check for that, and always make sure you wipe everything down as clean as possible before putting the new filter on with fresh oil lubricated on the ring. All right, so we got the new oil filter. We took a little bit on our finger and we rubbed it around the o-ring i also took the oil and put a tiny bit just just into some of the cracks on the top it's it's what they call priming the filter make sure it's nice and nice and wiped down because your tool will slip on it and the more you slip the more frustrated you will get we do not want to deform the new filter because this is going to be on the motor for a while so we need to take these necessary steps to make sure this goes on properly all right, let's get to it. All right, so now that we have the new oil filter right here, I've wiped it down, and we've already checked to make sure the old O-ring is gone, and the new one's got fresh oil on it. Make it as hand tight as you can, and then come back with the tool, but do not crush the filter. Any mechanic will tell you that's an amateur mistake. If you scratch the metal slightly or the paint on it, it's okay, just do not deform the actual metal shape itself. We're just about there, guys. Okay. So we've avoided deforming it as best we can. So we got the oil plug back in. We got the oil filter switched out, lubed up, and tightened without crushing it. Now let's go and put 5.7 quarts into the motor, and we're going to turn it on, okay? Here we go. You can stick this in the fill tube, and we can get going. Check to make sure you have the right weight and begin. Um, good thing to do is if it's on such an angle like this where you have to hold it and it's dripping, just lay some rag down under it. It's gonna catch whatever oil you spill. And you start the pour. You don't want it to be too slow because it will dribble down the front of the container. Don't fill up the funnel too fast and just let it drain at the same speed it's filling. We're pretty much there, so. All right, that's good enough for me. So, I don't know if it's a Okay, yeah, it's a 946 milliliter, so seven tenths of that would be just around 300 milliliters left in this to make 5.7 liters in the engine. I'm sorry, 5.7 quarts in the engine. Trust me, liters are bigger than quarts. Start the pour. Oh, look at that, perfect. Right at about 300. Now that the oil is in, we will close the cap, go under one more time and check the drain plug, then start the engine and let it run. Now that the engine has been running for a couple minutes, we're gonna turn it back off and we're gonna check the oil dipstick. We're gonna pull out this dipstick. While it's running, it's gonna spit oil up the dipstick, so just allow the oil to settle back down before you go back in and check for the actual oil level. It should only take about 60 seconds to two minutes. The oil has now leaked back down. Put the oil dipstick back in so we can get a better reading. And you can see, fourth hole from the top. So I'd say we're at a safe level now for sure. Yep, we're pretty much done here. With that being said, I hope you've learned a lot from this video. If you want to see more, like and subscribe because I'm going to continue making videos about this fan and other things in my life. Have a nice day!